Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, you know what I was thinking of is you don't really, if you're new to Farming Simulator 17, you've never seen any videos of it, you might be a little confused about if this is the way everything looks. So what I was thinking is we're going to real quick, like, take our guy Luke here, and we're going to buzz over to the U.S. to visit Uncle Jesse at his Goldcrest Valley farm. And just so we can kind of get a, maybe a compare and contrast type of video about the difference between this Eastern European uh, landscape, former Soviet bloc type of a program to, you know, what uh, Uncle Jesse is working on there in the U.S. So let's, uh, real quick, like, I'm just going to buzz over there. I'm coming through all the gear. This is what it looks like for a new farmer who's well, got a little bit of money. We're going to buzz over to the Goldcrest Valley real quick and check out what Uncle Jesse's got going on over there. So uh, just bear with me three minutes and we'll get right over there. All right, welcome to Northern California here at Goldcrest Valley. Looks like Uncle Jesse is out in the field somewhere, so we're going to see if we can't find him. We're going to pop into, uh, back there he was right there in the moor. We're going to pop into his pickup here. We're going to take it for a nice little spin around Goldcrest Valley. So Goldcrest, whoops, and ran into a tree right away. We will have to replace his truck. Let's just run up to the main farm here, which is kind of where we landed. Caught the bus to come over to the main farm here. See, now Uncle Jesse's got a nice place. He's got everything that you need right here. He's got his, his barn is here nice clean area so what we'll do is we'll just pull in real quick you can see how big his farmhouse is in his farm now these three fields here the ones that he first started with and this potato field here is half with half growing and, and uh, the other half is behind a little bit just recently harvested some sugar beets out of this field some wheat out of that field we'll buzz over here over top of the mountain Uncle Jesse, he puts beehives in locations where fields are connected to help the harvest. We'll come down here across the train tracks by the train station, or the, one of the silos here, go over to the sheep pit. He just made this, this field some grass, so we just cut across the grass field. Uncle Jesse's got his wind turbines up, and you can see the nice snow-capped mountain in the background there. So this is Uncle Jesse's sheep pen. As you can see, he's got a lot of wool piling up. He's going to have to get that loaded and fired off to the spinnery soon enough. I don't remember how many sheep he's got in here. We can check real quick. We'll quick, take a quick look at the map overview. So when Uncle Jesse first got here, he had to start with these three fields here and now he's expanded his holdings all the way out here here up here towards the pig, the pig pasture or the pig pen perhaps over here by Pacific or Goldcrest Pacific Grain and then collected a lot of this land down here now Uncle Jesse is not going to be buying all this up that's not his plan his plan was just to get a good farm going and be competitive, but he doesn't want to put all these other folks out of business, so he has no intentions on taking all the land up. In fact, this is probably about all he's going to get. He may get a couple of fields up here, and he would like to have this giant field up here, the biggest one on the map, which is what, 11, 12 hectares. So anyway, we'll take a look and see what he's got going on. You can see he's got a lot of grain stored up. He's got... Over 100,000 liters of wheat, 64,000 liters of barley, over 121,000 liters of canola, almost 100,000 liters of sunflowers, soybeans, corn, and a lot of potatoes. He's got a little bit of everything going on on his farm here. So you can see he's been at it for 61 growing seasons, or some of his equipment is 61 growing seasons. He's on his now his third rounds of new tractors. So Uncle Jesse has 82 sheep, 179 pigs, and 92 cows. He's got a lot of eggs he's got to collect as well. And uh, let's hop back into the, the pickup here real quick. We'll drive around, we'll head up to the pig pen, 
slip over to the biogas plant. But mostly what it was, just kind of a, you can see what the difference is of a, of a modern American farm with fresh equipment, trains, you know, um, a beautiful landscape. Just a standard upkeep of what uh, upkeep of what you might see in in the states. Make this quick loop up here, then we'll go down towards the cow pasture. So off here in this, show you the uh, biogas plant. So they do have a biogas plant here, in Cal Northern California. Looks like he's working on making him. He's got a, a silo bin that's, or silo that's been used, and he's filling up another one. All this stuff is his equipment. He's got a lot. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't take his money with him. He spends it if he needs to spend it. He cruise up here by the pins real quick. Not much traffic on this back road, so we can take up as much as we need. And here's his pig pasture, or his pig pen. Hard work, he uh, sells most of them. He has recently decided to bring their numbers up a little bit better so he can have a better a better uh, livestock sale every, every season. He's built this giant silo here. He had to, had to get some land here and build this silo so he had a place for his sugar cane that that uh, Daisy decided she's down in South America growing sugar cane. She sent up some of the some of the, the requirements to grow it up to here to Uncle Jesse. Here he's got a sugar cane field. Looks like it's got another stage of to, to grow before it's ready to harvest. Some corn that's ready. Here's that big field, that 12 hectare field he'd like to have. Just for singular crops like uh, cash crops like soybeans. So of course now we'll just zip down towards town. We'll check out the uh, cow pasture. Get to look along the uh, the nice landscape here in Northern California. Amazing. Looks like his workers are done down here on this field work, and he hasn't been able to make it back. We'll have to let him know that. He's got equipment that's not running that won't make him happy. He's push hard, push hard for three to go. He's got this nice giant field of soybeans over here on the left. Looks like he might even have a harvest store over there. Are you ready to get ready? So I'm not sure what time. Well, it's nine o'clock in the morning, so it's coffee time. Once they get done with their break, then everybody get back to work. So we'll cruise through. We'll get a little bit of the town here, right over around this area. We'll find Bakery, which is right here. Right over here. Here's, oops, I hit the stop sign. The do not enter sign. <laughs> There's a reason that that sign's there. Can't enter from this direction. So here's the Bakery. A few blocks to the, to the west here will be the Wind's blowing pretty stiff out here today. Got the flags on edge. There they are. Yeah, just a few blocks up this way, you'll find the spinnery. Want to uh, let Jesse know that he's got almost a full paddock of wool that he's going to have to get down here to the spinnery. So here's the spinnery. Right over here is the cow pasture. Got another windmill up over here. Cows are giving him lots of manure there. And he's got a lot of gear over here. Looks like he's filling up this uh, silage silo for for the cows. We're having them close right here so he doesn't have to run up to the biogas plant every time he needs some silage. Looks like he's doing corn silage, which we'll be doing a lot of that. 
Sosnovka, I want to get back over there. This is a corn, this is a forage harvester over here with the corn header on it. What it does is it takes the entire crop, grinds it up into that green mushy chaff that you see here in the silo. Then you cover that up with the blanket like we saw with the biogas plant and that turns it into silage. It's got this big crone trailer and it's, and it's semi and it's trap ear and it's got a couple of big time tractors. We won't see a lot of those big tractors over in South Stockton because it's not quite that. Quite a, the map isn't quite built for, for uh, big equipment like that. Big tractors in play. Those are big Valtra S series tractors. Let's jump over this curve here real quick. Head over towards the store. So all this stuff over here is Uncle Jesse's stuff. These fields. We're swinging around, going to the shop here. See if he's got anything he's picked up. We'll let him, we'll remind him. If he hasn't had a coffee or a second pot to coffee anyway, he'll forget. So here's the shop. Right over here is the sandwich. Sandwiches, there's a coffee shop, there's I think an ice cream parlor as well, if I remember correctly. So then we'll buzz down around the edge here and we'll see the, the last few fields on the west end of town here. I know he just picked up another field to do some, some uh, tree planting. Just a small scale, nothing like what we do doing over in Sosnovka. So, so with those potatoes are about to be harvested there. We'll cruise around the corner here. Right over here by the, the sawmill is where he decided to pick up a small field to plant some trees. And then uh, he cut the trees down, sell the logs to the mill and the, and the uh, wood chips to the mill. So this last little farm right here, this last little plot of land is what he picked up. Looks like it's been plowed, but that's as far as it's gotten. He's probably not in a big rush to start planting trees. And right over here is the sawmill, so it's a good close proximity. He won't have to cart his, his timber very far. We'll swing up around the north side of the map here and we'll be back to, to the main farm for a short life. We'll just park his truck back at the house because we're running out of time. We're going to have to get back to the airport to get back to Sunstopka. Lots of work to do there. But we can pull off here and we can get a good view of the countryside, mountains, and such. Got the train silo off there in the distance. One of three. And we're swinging back around towards the pig pit. Just over there on the other side of that uh, other train silo. Fuel station right here. Uncle Jesse's on this end. He needs to get some diesel for all his equipment. He's got a lot of it. I think he's got his old fuel truck or fuel tanker. That way he can refuel the big tractors and the harvesters on the field and having them come all the way back into town. Swing down under the railroad bridge and then back to the main farm. So this is Goldcrest Valley and Uncle Jesse's works. He's got his good spread going on here. Set a good example of how, how to get things done. And we'll just park in here. He'll, he'll just catch a ride with one of the workers back. Or we'll have to bring, or maybe bring one of the harvesters over here. So that's it. We got to get ourselves back over to the airport and get back over to South South. So we'll catch you on the flip side. All right, welcome back. It is late in the air. It's in the early afternoon back in South South after our long flight back from Goldcrest Valley. And we have a lot of work to do. Uh, so, what I was thinking about is, we're going to have to do, well, let's get in the pickup here real quick, if we can find it. Or we can just, let's just take the voucher down the road here. 
see all the silage bales that got piled up all over the, the map here. But I recently just found out something by accident is I can take all my bales of any kind, straw, grass, hay, silage, it's the biogas plant, and they'll turn it into compost, and then we'll get the, the liquid off the compost. But I'm thinking that we're probably going to have to, like what Uncle Jesse did, probably going to have to sacrifice a field, which has turned the map a little bit, and I think I found the field sacrifice. We'll cruise down along here. I'm thinking that this... Some of this section along the riverbed would be a good place to start planting some trees. We won't cover it all up, but they'll have ready access to, to water, and there's not a lot going down here. And we'll have this nice logging road to haul our, our material out once it gets grown. That way, we don't have to. We'll have some more time to kind of develop the land around the, the housing sections and the business sections. But down over here by the uh, hydroelectric plant closing in on it. There's a little field that uh, you may just have to sacrifice. It's, it's out of the way, it's out of town, it's pretty obscure, so all of our large silos and what have you won't, uh, won't be too much of an eyesore for the local population. So let's see, I think it's down over here. Just past the garden center. How we should have our beacons on over here. In the US, you only have to have your beacons on if you're a road hazard. So if you're not slowing traffic down or interrupting traffic flow in any one way or the other, you don't have to have your beacons on if that just drive it down the road. So this little field over here, number 31, I think it's a, it's a good example of a place that we can, we can buy up the land and we can uh, make some buildings out here. And we've got this little, a little bit of pasture. We can clean some of this up by cutting down some of these trees. It's a good place at the electrical grid here. And we've got the garden center right here that's handy when we have, we have wood chips to sell. We can put a couple of silos down over here. And like I say, it's well, there's nothing really in eyesight uh, of the field here. It's kind of snug down here, kind of away from everything. But it was either that or sacrifice big chunks of metal land, and I didn't really want to do that. I'd like to avoid making any grass fields. I'd like to just be able to get all the grass that we mowed off of meadows and along the fields and such like that. So we drive up here with the forest a little bit. We won't do a lot of tree harvesting up here because this is a natural forest and you know we might come in here and thin out some of the dead trees if we come across them just to keep the fire danger down we don't want we don't want dry timber to uh, ignite a flame and burn the whole thing to the ground be a little bit just to come up and i don't have come across any dead trees yet but i definitely will uh let the natural forest run if there's any wildlife in there, we don't want to interrupt that. They're taking down their shelter and their, their shade. And yeah, I haven't seen any, uh, any dead trees yet that have lost any of their branches. So, looks like the forest is pretty healthy. They probably had some folks in before we showed up maintaining it. Down here, we might be able to cross the river. But then again, I'm not sure. Might just be driving in circles. But it's a beautiful day out. The sun is high, bright, hardly any wind.
Okay, and then on a, on a not so gaming note, I wanted to. I'm sure some of you have seen the little green glowing dollar signs in the background. Well, that's how I have to add the monies into the game. You know how well uh, I talked about when we started that we got a bunch of grants from big agricultural companies. But since I don't play on PC, I can't edit the game file. So my only option is to get a money cheat code or a money cheat mod to get that money in so we can role play our purpose here. Uh, and that's what those things are down there. That's how I got the money collected. Because unlike Goldcrest Alley and um, some of the other maps that are available in the game, they don't have the gold nuggets to find in which case when you find all 100 gold nuggets, you get $1 million in your bank account or euros or pounds or whatever. It, the, the money doesn't change. So, you know, $1 million is you know, isn't uh, 770,000 pounds or, or 625,000 euros. That's not how it works. One million dollars is equal to one million pounds or one million euros. They don't have a, there's not a exchange rate difference between them. So that's why, you know, that's why I'm just using the standard uh, trading monies, which is the the U.S. dollar, all commodities are traded in the U.S. dollar. Um, just like the language of money is English. So this is our silo, or our biogas plant, of course, and you can see I've got all kinds of bales everywhere. And some of that was prepped for our cows, because we're going to need to make power food. Um, getting ready to take up this metal down here, and just go around this field because you know, we'll have to stay out here close to the, the, uh, the electrical or telephone poles here. Because if you get too close, we won't be able to cut the grass there. So, anyway, I wanted to say thanks for going on this little field trip with us back to Gold Coast Valley just to get an idea of the differences between the two maps. And then back over here, and as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do with uh, Luke here. And I also want to make just a small note that I'm probably going to start another series of Farming Simulator 17. And we're going to follow along as another character starts farming from a small farm, probably go through four different maps with one character. Starting with a small, a small machine farm to a medium medium size, small to medium. You know what? Let me just explain what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about size of farms. So Sasnaki here is, to me, and I'm just kind of making up these categories as I go along. To me, Sasnaki is a heavy, what I would call a heavy small farm to a heavy medium farm. And what I mean by that is the size of the tractors and the implements that are being used to pull up. So what I mean by heavy small is right here, starting with, the T6, you know, 143 horsepower, the Valtra, the Sammy, and the Fent. Uh, actually, the Fent 700 burial fits in both the heavy, small, and the medium sized tractors. Um, all the way up to what I would consider the top tractor for this map would be the Series 9 Blitz Bar because maximum horsepower 336. Whereas the Maxi Ferguson starts the large tractor category, which starts out at 300 horsepower and maxes out at 400. So we won't be seeing probably running uh, Maxi Ferguson's 8700, T8s, 900 Fence, uh, Voucher S Series, Challengers, or Maggies, or anything like that, because this map doesn't even need that. You know, we just need some stuff to pull certain implements up to about 300 horsepower. And even some of the bigger fields, you know, we have uh, this Condor here that doesn't need 300 horsepower and it's got a big 15 meter uh, seating width. Uh, that's probably one of the bigger, so bigger machines that we may end up getting once we get some bigger fields. You know, maybe, maybe this Great Plains here only because it can plant corn, it can plant every grain type and sugar beets at 18.2 meters. Um, and since sugar beets and potatoes root crops specifically will be a huge part of what we do. So a lot of it will be 
So number one crop, which is basically three, three fields are always planted with our number one crop at a time, and that will be sunflower. And we will have wheat, barley in every harvest. Uh, we'll probably obviously have corn just because of all the pigs that we're going to have. We won't have a lot of soybeans. Uh, we won't have a lot of corn. Uh, mostly it will be sunflowers, wheat, barley, and canola. And uh, the occasional uh, field of soybeans and corn will mostly be feed or silage. And then it'll be root crops, potatoes, and sherbets. So that's the plan with us now. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. And look for the the other series starting soon with a character named Bo and his small little farm in Saxony, Germany. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next video.